You have server workloads that you wanna to deploy to Azure and you wanna know how to get started. Great news, you have come to the right place. My name is Eric Boyd. I'm an Azure MVP, a Microsoft Regional Director, and the founder of ResponsiveX, where we help customers run workloads and develop applications in Azure. If you have workloads that require you to have control of the underlying operating system so that you can manage the configuration of the servers and application installations, then Azure Virtual Machines is a great fit for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started deploying your server infrastructure to Azure Virtual Machines. I'm going to dive right in and start creating a virtual machine in Azure. I'll navigate to the Azure portal by going to portal.azure.com in my web browser. If I click the Create a Resource button in the upper left-hand corner of the portal, I can start creating resources in Azure. I can browse through the categories and find the item I'd like to create. For example, if I wanted to create a Windows or Linux virtual machine, I'd start in the Compute category. You'll notice the See More in Marketplace link. If you click that, it will take you into the Marketplace, where you will find thousands of applications and pre-built solutions from Microsoft and Microsoft partners. This can certainly help you accelerate your deployment timelines by taking advantage of pre-built solutions from the Marketplace. To deploy from the Marketplace, you will have to have a payment method associated to your Azure subscription, so you won't be able to take advantage of the Marketplace during a free trial. But I wanted to make you aware of this for when you upgrade your subscription from a free trial to a pay-as-you-go subscription. At this point, I want to create a virtual machine in the cloud, and since I'm just getting started with Azure, I want to start in the Quick Start Center. So I'm going to click on the Try Our Quick Start Center link. In the Start a Project section, you'll see several core Azure scenarios. I'm going to choose Deploy a Virtual Machine and click on the Start link. Now it will ask me if I want to create a Windows or a Linux virtual machine. I'm going to choose Windows Virtual Machine and click on Learn More to see more details about this scenario, including a reference architecture diagram, recommendations, and even ways to optimize cost, including information about what's available to me in the free account. I'm going to click the Create button now to start configuring my Windows Virtual Machine. It's going to ask me for some basic information. First, I need to pick what subscription we'd like to deploy our virtual machine into. Next, I'll pick a resource group. A resource group is just a container of multiple resources used for an app. In this case, I'm just creating a single VM. So I'm going to name the resource group using the name of my virtual machine. I'll prefix it with RG dash for resource group. I'll go to the next text box and enter the name of the virtual machine. Now I need to select a physical location for my virtual machine. Now for my example, I'm going to imagine my customers for this workload are going to be on the east coast of the US. So back in the portal, I'll select the east US region. You'll see the availability options that we just talked about right here. We have availability zones and availability sets. I'm going to tell it that I don't need infrastructure redundancy for this workload and continue on. I'm going to select standard in the dropdown next to the security type. But you'll notice that there are additional capabilities available for trusted launch and confidential virtual machines with capabilities like secure boot and virtual TPM chips. Then I'll get to pick the image that I want to use for this virtual machine. At the very top, we'll see a number of Linux distros. At the bottom, we'll see the Windows server options as well. I'm going to create a Windows Server VM so I'm going to select Windows Server 2019 Data Center Edition. But that's not a full list. That's just the popular featured and recommended options. If you wanted to browse the full marketplace, you can do that by clicking See All Images. Next, I'm going to configure the VM size. I'm happy with the size that is selected here, but I do want to show you how you can pick the sizes. I'm going to click on See All Sizes, and this will take me into the Size Browser. From here, we will see a list of sizes that are available to me for my subscription and subscription type, as well as the region that I've selected. Now, you'll notice that I'm seeing popular sizes under the most used by Azure users grouping, but there are many other groups that I can browse. 
Using the filters at the top, I can narrow into the sizes I'm interested in for my workload. I'm going to change these filters and I'm going to tell it to only show me sizes with zero to eight CPUs. What's important to understand here is that Azure has a VM size for every workload that you could imagine. You saw that I had the option of several hundred CPUs. I can provision VM sizes with 480 CPU cores if I have compute intensive workloads. If I have memory intensive workloads, I can find VMs with tens of terabytes of RAM. If I want to do some AI modeling or some rendering, there are VMs with NVIDIA GPUs. There is quite literally a size for every workload. But to keep this economical, I'm going with this standard D2 ASV4 size, which will give me two CPU cores and eight gigs of RAM. Next, I'll configure local admin credentials for my VM. After I'm done creating this VM, I can domain join this to Windows Server Active Directory or Azure Active Directory. I also have the ability to configure inbound port rules. This is not comprehensive network management, but instead is a quick way for me to open ports that might be useful for remote management at deployment time. In this case, I'm going with Remote Desktop RDP. I'll click the Next button and go to the Disk Configuration screen. From here, I can select the performance of the operating system disk, and I can attach additional data disks if I needed additional storage capacity on this virtual machine. I'll click the Next button again and go to the Networking Configuration. Here, I can configure advanced networking settings, including the virtual network configuration, the public IP address, network security groups, which allow us to define firewall policies, inbound port rules, and a load balancer. I'm happy with these default settings, so I'll go ahead and click the Review and Create button in the lower left-hand corner. This will take me to the summary for what I'm about to do. It will show me that I'm creating a virtual machine. It will show me the configuration that I have selected for the virtual machine. The summary also shows me the pricing details and cost for the resource that I'm about to create. This level of transparency and insight is really important so that you have a good understanding of how much you'll be spending with your trial credits or your dollars for your real world workloads. At the top, you'll also see a banner that shows that the validation passed. And that means that all of our settings work well together, that we have permissions to deploy this machine with our subscription, and that we are adhering to all of the policies set forth by our organization for this virtual machine. I'll press the Create button and start the deployment, which will take me to the deployment screen. We can watch the deployment. The VM creation will take a few minutes because we are creating a virtual machine and all of the supporting resources for that VM. When the virtual machine is finished deploying, I can click on the Go to Resource button, and it will take me directly to the details page for that virtual machine. You'll see basic configuration information at the top and the tabs below that let you see more configuration properties and utilization details in the charts. You'll also find a strip of buttons across the top that let you manage the life cycle of this virtual machine. You can use these buttons to start, restart, and stop the VM. I can capture an image of the VM if I wanted to create additional VMs that look just like this VM. I can delete the VM. I can even click on this connect button. When I do that, it will show me some options for connecting to this machine remotely. RDP is first since it's a Windows Server VM. Clicking on RDP will give me an option to download an RDP file to my local system. I can then open that up and remote desktop into this virtual machine. Now here we are in our Windows Server virtual machine running in Microsoft Azure. I can configure this VM like any server in my own data center or in this case, a cloud provider like Azure. I'm going to close this RDP session and go back to the Azure portal now. I have an Ubuntu Linux VM running in my Azure subscription. And if I browse to my Azure portal dashboard, you can see an Ubuntu Linux tile that I've previously pinned to my dashboard. If I click that tile, it'll take me directly to the details for this Ubuntu Linux VM. It looks just like the Windows Server. I see the basic overview at the top and the details and charts at the bottom. I even see the same strip of buttons at the top. If I click the Connect button this time, RDP is not at the top of the list. Azure knows this is a Linux VM and we're not going to remote desktop into it. Instead, we'll SSH into it. 
And if I just select SSH, it will show me a pre-formatted SSH command that I can copy to my clipboard and paste into a terminal or command prompt window and start my SSH session with the virtual machine that's running in Azure. In seconds, I'll be SSH'd into this VM running in Azure. I can do things like run top and get a list of running processes or whatever else I need to do to manage this Linux VM. I'm going to close these connections and take us back out to the portal. In the next video of this series, I will show you how you can use Azure App Service to run your web app workloads. Before I wrap up, I'd like to invite you to join me at our weekly Azure Live Q&A session. During the 30-minute session, I will host an interactive and live Q&A to answer your Azure questions.